Hi everybody. I have here with me an older deck by Il Menegello from 2012. Um, and this is Osvaldo Menegazzi's own creation called 22 Talisman in 22 Arcana, if I understand that Italian correctly. Now this is older in relation to 2018, but this is perhaps newer in relation to um, Osvaldo Menegazzi's older classic um, creations. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, Il Menegello is currently under new management. Uh, Cristina Dorsini is his uh, stepdaughter who is currently in charge of the company and I can see that there is a move away from the artist or from the man more towards the brand which I think is a very pragmatic approach. However, the romantic in me can't help but lament um, the ending of an era, so to speak. And so if you notice, um, in the past, the wax um, seal here, let me just focus for you, is of Osvaldo Menegazzi's initials O and M. This is one uh, variety. You would see a variety of other, um, one is like a, a shield with four parts, O and M. Um, and this one here is just kind of this round design here. These days, um, you would notice that the wax seal look a bit more like this one here. Now, if you are wondering what is this a silhouette of, this is a silhouette of Il Menegello's um, mascot, or uh, what do you call it? don't know what you can call it, a brand or a logo. Um, that one there. So in a lot of his older decks, you would see a lot of this one here. I noticed that in the newer um, editions, I shouldn't say newer decks because some of those decks have been around for a long time, but in the newer editions or publication or packaging or whatever you call it, um, it's a bit more sleek, a bit more corporate with the silhouette, but this is the original um, Il Menegello, not quite sure if you can call this logo, it's very charming, isn't it? I read somewhere why the name Il Menegello, I think in Italian it it means something along the line of like the fool in tarot. This kind of, this figure over here, this, um, I will try to find that um, article somewhere and probably link it down below. Otherwise, um, when I have the time and mental space to dig through my collection, I will try and do a video specifically talking about the progression or the evolution of um, the appearance of Il Menegalo decks. And so this one here, as you can see, is also an older business card. Osvaldo Menegazzi's name is still stated almost like a subtitle there. From what I understand, currently, as I've mentioned, there is a move away from the man and more towards the brand. So now it's just Il Menegello without his name. The other thing that has um, disappeared into time is Arnell Art. Uh, Arnell Art in the US used to be um, an important uh, distribution point for English-speaking market, I suppose. Um, and so here the Facebook is Il Menegello di Osvaldo Menegazzi. So I'll be quite curious to see if I type that in, what will pop up. Uh, as you can see in both cases, Osvaldo Menegazzi is very much attached to Il Menegello. I think um, judging from that story about this particular name here and this particular figure here, I think there's a little bit of the maestro in this, that sort of free spirited uh, gentle, generous, open-hearted um, person. I have never met him myself, but I get that sense very much from his face, from his photos, uh, the way he moves, the way he talk, uh, facial expressions, body language, um, his work, etc. Um, so, yeah, so... Now this has been eliminated and that's been eliminated and what's left is Il Menegello. So that's that's that and then this is still currently, you can still find this disclaimer of course in the current decks. And um, 
One of the things that I found quite charming about Il Manigalo decks is that lack of consistency and a huge variety in terms of cardstock, in terms of design of the bags, in terms of the design of the booklet, the box. And so I can't say whether um, there is a period in time where he signed the, um, the cover cards or not, but in this particular instance, um, that's his handwritten number 99 out of 250 there, and that's his signature, which I found quite uniquely pleasant as far as signatures go. Um, so that is a combination of this, um, what I sense to be an older, this uh, paper sheet, this um, tarot sheet here of some kind, like, um, I don't know, like a proof or a draft or some kind that you ended up using. And what I suspect, I could be wrong, but what I suspect is a 2013, 2014 um, type of tea stained um, boxes here. So there seemed to be like a transition going on here. And this booklet here as well, usually, well, not usually, but the ones that I know, I can't speak for all of their decks because I'm not, you know, I'm obviously not an expert and I don't own or have seen the entirety of their collection. I know someone who probably have and whose mother have been collecting um, the Maestro's work since the 80s, I think, but she's not on YouTube. She's on Instagram. And so this booklet I found quite unique from the ones that I've seen so far at the very least, because usually it's very plain, like so. Uh, this one has uh, this colored, uh, purposefully, uh, deliberately made purpose-made cover on the booklet there, which I've never seen before, so that's quite interesting. So let's take a look at the card. Um, the paper is very much art paper, but on the thin side, very, very uh, thin compared to, say, some of the uh, thicker, luscious, highly textured art paper cards that they have. Um, in the last couple of years or so. Definitely the thinnest one I have so far from them in terms of um, this kind of um, watercolor paper. So that's the full, that's the magician. I can't help but see Ilmenega, I mean, um, you see what I mean? I'm confusing the man and the brand and I think that might be part of why current management is uh, separating the two. I see Osvaldo Menegazzi here as the magician holding on to his brush and that's his white moustache and beard. I initially thought that might be a crown but I'm not quite sure, maybe that's just a hat. The Popes. The Empress. It's an interesting take on the Empress with the eyes. I'm wondering why that is. The Emperor. And so I'm thinking maybe the Emperor is things as they are and the Empress represent um, a view of the inner world through the eye there. This is a view of the outer world maybe. Yin and Yang, I'm not sure. This is the Popes, I mean this is the Pope. So like the Emperor, the Yang, uh, of the Yin and Yang there. They're both plants and they're both life givers in a sense. Oh, Earth's Earth's life giver, or the f source of food on Earth. The um, lovers here is a rose, six A six A in the background. Seven here is carriage or the chariot. I'm not quite sure what to make of this. The moon and the sun, yin and yang. I don't know. Um, in the back there, there is what looks like zero to is that 2012, is that what that is? Don't know. Justice, I'm not quite sure what the Hebrew letters, I think those are Hebrew letters. The Hermit, the Hourglass, Father Time, and then there's 2012, number one, number one. So not only did he date the artwork, but he literally made the year of the art the art. So that's interesting, the Wheel of Fortune. 
one, two, three, four. Strength, I'm not quite sure why strength is a coral. A hanged one is a pendulum. I think that's a symbol for the sun, that's a symbol for something I don't know. I think that's the sun, is that right? And that would be some kind of element of some kind? Don't know. Death, interesting that it's a plant. And the sun in the background either rising or setting. Temperance. The devil around the earth, so that's interesting. Tower, 13, 8, 3, 12. Is there a significance to the numbers there? I don't know. Now why is the star the fish? I keep thinking about the top or the top end of an anchor for some reason. And my mind goes to hope that is often symbolized with an anchor because to me star is hope. And fish and hope and anchor makes me think of those... Um, fish that um, when during was that Roman era when Christians were persecuted they went underground and they used to leave uh, the sign of the fish to indicate where they are gathering for people to find them and I think in Greek or in Latin fish is similar in sound or initial to something Christian I can't quite recall but that's where my mind go with the goes with the fish and the star here because I can't think of any other way to connect the fish to the star or hope in at the moment. Do you think that is the top end of a of an anchor? I don't know. This is the moon. His signature there. This is the what is this? The sun? V I T E, Vita. Isn't that life? So that's uh, yellow grapes, maybe green grapes. This is resurrection, awakening, judgment, um, the angel card. I would have thought of that, that the Pope is in, immediately in my mind when I see this hand. G2. Zero something zero. What what's the significance of those numbers and the letter G? I don't know. And why is resurrection this? Is this a call? A sign of benediction. Is that a call to a call to something in a way that the trumpet and the angel is perhaps? I don't know, I'm open to any suggestion, guys. Feel free to comment down below. This is the world. And the world is the eye. And this eye I've seen in a few of his other decks. I think the Masonic symbol, um, Major Arcana, I think, might be one of them. So the other eye in this deck is the Empress, which I'm quite intrigued about in the world. So why is that then? Why is the Empress an eye in the world as well? I could see the world like the eyes finally opening. You're finally at the end of that journey with your eye opened, with your eyes opened. Why is the Empress an eye? Well, the Emperor is a tree. And that is the Pope. So yeah, those I am not too sure about. If someone have any thoughts, please feel free to let me know because I'll be very happy to hear of your thoughts about those ones. And so that is the uh, 22 talisman in 22 arcana. It, it's often stuck every time I try to... I'm um, not quite sure... I don't know why this is.
Anyway, um, the beauty of handmade boxes and deck, and I'm, I'm actually not sure if their deck these days is still hand cut or handmade. I would, I would love to know. I'd be quite curious to know. But I found this really, really charming. This thing here. End of an era, eh? It's um, never easy to be a witness of the ending of an era. But hey, the beginning of another. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.